Now I picked this up a few hours ago and haven't opened it yet. It's still sealed in the box and I haven't actually seen an R5C. So I'm really curious to see what this camera looks like. Now this is actually my R5C. This isn't one I've got from Canon, I've actually purchased this. I will be doing a video in a couple of days on the 10 reasons why I sold the R5 to buy the R5C. So keep an eye out for that video. But let's just do a quick unboxing. Um, I'm guessing everything in here is the same as the R5. There could be something different, I don't know. I haven't looked inside yet. So let's open the box and see what's inside, I guess. On the top, there is a piece of paper which says caution on it. Okay, I might read that. I don't know what that's about, but I might read that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the box down here on a stool because it'll be easier because it just gets in the way at the front here. Now I've got a two year warranty with Canon. I've got three different manuals. Well, same manuals, but in different languages. That one's English, but why is that one thinner than the other manuals? It's like half the thickness. It's a bit strange, but I will actually read this manual. I don't normally read the manuals to my cameras, but I will actually read this one because there's probably a few things I need to learn on the R5C. Now this video is actually being recorded on the R3 and the C70. And that does actually feel a little bit chunkier than an R5. We'll get to that in a minute. I like the fact the box is cardboard inside, unlike the R5 box, which is plastic. It's just like this plastic mold and everything shakes around inside. So having the cardboard, good job, Canon. I've got my figure eight plug with New Zealand and Australia on the end there. It doesn't fit in any other countries unless you bend these straight and then it fits in America and some Asian countries as well. I have actually had to do that. I took a New Zealand plug with me and I couldn't use it to charge something. So if you actually bend these two prongs straight, they actually fit in American and in Taiwan. That's where I made the mistake. So that's just a standard figure of eight cable. We've got some accessories, more cardboard. Okay, let's start with this. Now this is the bracket obviously for the USB-C cable and the HDMI cable. I do really wish the HDMI on this cable was full size, not the micro or mini or whatever it is. Not a problem for me because I'm not gonna use this camera to record external RAW because it records it internally. That's one of the main reasons why I shoot with Canon is their internal RAW. This will do 8K 60p RAW unlimited. The C70 now does RAW in light and standard and the R3 does RAW 6K video. Can't go wrong with that really. That's the reason why I like shooting with the Canons is they do the RAW internal. I actually shoot with the red cameras. My red Komodo does 6K RAW and that's a different RAW to these cameras though. Red's R3D RAW is, is the best in the market. There's nothing that can touch the RAW that comes out of a red camera. So that's the bracket. We have a USB-C to USB-C cable. Now you can actually charge this camera from an external battery bank because I do know the battery doesn't last long from some of the videos I've watched. I think it's around about 40 minutes. One of these Canon batteries. This is from my R5. One of these Canon batteries, same battery, will last about 40 minutes recording 8K RAW, which is not a long time, but you can actually power the camera indefinitely, basically, from an external battery bank. I think it's a PD USB-C battery bank. I think it's what it is. I've got one coming, it'll be here tomorrow. And I would include that in a video coming soon of the accessories for the R5C. So there's a USB-C to USB-C cable. You've got the charger. That's exactly the same as the R5, the R6, and I think some of the older Canon cameras. I've not actually owned any of the older Canon cameras. Um, so I'm guessing that's the same charger, but same as the R5. There's the battery because that was my battery. Same battery. Yeah, exact same battery. And then you go, oh, this is different. You got a neck strap. Now this is actually, I think, the same neck strap that came in my C70, which I never use. Um, it's a really nice padded neck strap. Look at the size of that. That's actually a nice neck strap. I think it's a bit overkill for the R5C because it's actually quite a small camera, but it could come in handy for some people. I don't actually use my neck straps, so that's it, neck strap. And that's all that's in the box. Not really a lot for your money, is there really? Let's look at the camera. I haven't actually seen one of these yet. I'm curious to see how big the bulge at the back is. Oh wow, that does stick out a bit, doesn't it? That's a big ass fan on there, look at that, wow. Actually, hang on a minute. That looks about 
So if you want to know how much more this sticks out from your R5, there you go, look at that. That's the, the R5 battery, it's about the same thickness. It sticks out quite a bit actually. But if it stops it from overheating, I'm not going to complain. My R5 overheated twice in all the time I owned it for video. Didn't use it that much for video to be truthful. But that wasn't even the all eye setting in 4K. I think it was the lower setting. And for some reason it just overheated. But then when I did the new firmware update, no problems at all. It never overheated. And the fact that 8K all eye, I got up to 30 minutes before obviously it shut down because it shuts down after 30 minutes, never overheated. So I've never had that problem with the R5. This records unlimited raw though. 8K 60p, you do lose a few functions. I will talk about that in another video. Um, I believe it does other versions of RAW as well. I think on the box it actually said it does 4K RAW and 2K RAW internally to the two memory card slots in it, which are exactly the same as the R3 and the R5. That doesn't actually feel any different to an R5. I thought this might cause a bit of a problem when I'm holding it, the bulge, but it doesn't interfere with the camera at all. It actually feels like an R5 to be truthful. I mean, it does stick out a bit at the back, but if it stops it overheating, like I said, I'm not gonna complain. Let's whack a battery in there. I've got one charged here. Hang on a minute. Okay. Now, you have a switch here, which will boot it up, and it will boot into photo mode, which is already in now. And then you switch it that way, and then it will boot up into takes a few seconds well, it's not too bad I don't think I'm complaining too much about that and then you get full video functions with the camera and when I say video functions I mean waveform false colors a lot of the other features there is one thing I want to try with this camera to see if it can do it which I love my C74 which is face only autofocus so basically it will lock onto my face and it will track my face no problem but when I walk out the frame it will stay exactly where it is the autofocus won't shoot to the background which a lot of mirrorless cameras do that has saved my bacon quite a few times in the C70, um, and I love that feature. I do love that feature about the C70 is the face only. Autofocus, I think it's called, and I'm hoping this has got it as well. But that is actually a very nice camera. You can actually feel the air blowing out the side of that. I've turned it on, I've got no lens on there, but that is blowing quite a bit of air out there. I don't know if you can hear that on the microphone. I'm quite impressed with that. That's blowing out quite a bit of air. That's quite shocking actually. You've got all your standard ports, you've got on your R5, you've got time code now, which is nice, and you've got a nice red button on the front. But remember, this is a stills camera and a video camera. So this is an R5 in photo mode, all the same, exactly the same, but there are no video functions in that part of the menu. Then when you switch it over to the video mode, it's complete video. And I'm guessing there's no photo function there, but I will let you know in an upcoming video. Now this has this, Canon multi-shoe on the top, whatever they call it. This actually has terminals in it, so you can add accessories. I don't have many accessories at the moment, but the one I do have, which I'm testing at the moment, which works with the R3 as well, because it has the same hot shoe, is this, which is the transmitter for the flash units. And that just slides in and locks. And there you go, there it is. I've tested this with one of Canon's flashes over the last week, and I'm very impressed on how easy it is to operate this and how far it works. And it's got a nice rubber gasket. If I release it, you'll actually see it under there. There's actually a rubber gasket around that. So when you slide it on, it actually seals it. Perfect. Now, one thing I have said before in my R3 unboxing video is you have to be careful of the hot shoe. These cameras are weather sealed to a point, but this part is not on no camera. So don't lose the hot shoe cover and always keep it on there when you're not using the hot shoe or multi shoe, whatever they call it. I do have the Tascan whatever it's called, the module that goes in the top, which locks into this so you don't use any cables, that will be here in a couple of days. So we'll be doing a quick review on that next week and let you know what I think about it. Because I'm actually gonna be testing it on the R3 and I'll be testing it on the C70 because it actually works on the C70 as well. Well, it works with any camera, but I'll talk about that in the video next week. Yeah, very impressed with that. It's actually a very comfortable camera. It's obviously a bit chunkier. Well, yeah, it's put on a bit of weight there, but if it stops it overheating in video and I get unlimited, remember that, unlimited 8K 60p raw internal in a camera that size. That has to be the smallest cinema camera, proper cinema camera. But it's a nice camera, I must admit, I'm very impressed with that. It 
doesn't feel any different to an R5, to be truthful. I don't think it'll make any difference shooting it. The fact that it can still shoot 45 megapixel photos and 20 frames and everything else, the same as the R5, and then you flick that switch there, and that should boot up. Not yet. Not yet. There you go. Oh, that takes a bit of time, doesn't it? Well, you never know. They may be able to improve that in a firmware update. So that was just a quick unboxing of the R5C to show you guys what comes in the box. To let you know, I do have a video coming in a couple of days on the 10 reasons why I bought the R5C and I sold my R5. And I also have the Tascan module, XLR module that comes at the top, which I'll be doing a review on in a couple of days. Now, if you guys have any questions, anything you want me to test with the R5C that you're curious about, leave me a comment down below. I will do my best to include that in an upcoming video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching.